And we're pleased to welcome back Nikki Lilly, who joins us now. Um, it's so lovely to see you. It really is. to be here. You have been extremely busy, haven't you, since we last I saw have you? Indeed, yeah. And the interviews, um, how, do, how do you find people to, to do the interviews? Do you approach them? How does it work? So, um, at the beginning of every series that I do, I've done two series now, I write down a list of people that I'd like to interview yeah. and then um, my team tries to approach them and ask. And some people even approach me and say, you know, like, I've seen your Nikki Lilly meets, I'd love to like, be, be interviewed by you. Um, but it's so, so fun because everyone's completely different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've interviewed authors, chefs, just people. People Prime Minister, the public, just saw that. yeah, the Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn, it's crazy. So, and uh, and today, um, to top that list off, mm. after the show, uh, you're going to interview us. I am indeed. It's going to be very fun. I've got what I also oh, uh, what I like is, and this is a, this is very clever, is that the people that you interview, you also bake for them. Yeah. So I, um, in 2016, I won Junior Bake Off, um, and so we thought it would be really fun to bake something for every person I interview. So. Um, for Jeremy Corbyn, I actually did scones because he has an allotment um, and brought his jam along, so... Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, you brought some scones along for us, and these are no ordinary scones, are they? What, what's inside these So ones? these are my... I do these quite a lot. They're rose and pistachio scones. Yummy! And baking, actually, although being delicious and yummy and a lovely thing when you sit yeah. down and interview somebody, actually it's helped you quite a lot, hasn't it? Definitely. Um, baking's been... A big coping mechanism for me um, and it's really nice that if I'm having a bad day I can just zone out and focus on the recipe so mm, you that is so good the rose is so delicate oh you're doing it without the I know what because you took it all over there <laughs> <laughs> there we are we're doing this the Cornish way any other way we're gonna put cream on top of the jam. Phil I heard that you love clotted cream mm. he does he's obsessed with it I mean oh, he's really yeah, you know, yeah. Well, I've made you actually something else. Yeah. I've made you something else for the interview that also has clotted cream. Mm. Oh, well, don't say what that is, because then you'll have <laughs> no, to watch I'm not the going interview to, to find out. Save it. Well, so, hang on a second, I've just given We've you also got, this a bit of a Well, go. while you eat that, tonight there's a documentary, This Is I Will Survive, and it's at 5.30 on CBBC. Yeah. Now, during the making of this, you were really poorly, weren't you? I was. Um, in June, which wasn't long after I actually no. um, came Hang on this on morning exactly. last year, um, I was very poorly. I actually ended up being ad emergency admitted to hospital um, because I was bleeding really profusely. Mm. Um, and they had to put me in a sleep-induced coma for eight days oh. to stabilise the bleeding and just let my body rest, really, because I'd lost so much blood. So it was a very scary time um, for both me and my family, but... Um, I'm a lot better now. So. Well, that's really good yeah. news. And you've still got some surgery coming up this year. Yeah, so I had one in August. Um, they formulated a plan after the emergency admission. So I had one surgery in August. Um, I had one in December. Um, and I think I'm going to be having a little break now and have another mm. one in June. So. You, um, you also let the cameras follow you. Um, I did. Through all of this. There definitely was moments like that. So, for example, when I actually had my surgery, um, I just walked into the hospital and said, I think that you should close the cameras now because I just want to be able to wait for the surgery and go through that by myself with my yeah. parents because it was a big surgery. Mm. And that's when you don't really want the cameras around. But I think it's really important to show the harder bits of life because I feel like sometimes, even with social media, it can be a filter for only the good parts of life. You know, so true. People airbrush photos, people pose for photos so many times and do so many things to, like, purvey a perfect life, when actually no-one's life is perfect and you do have the hard times. And I wanted to show that me living with a chronic illness, it is hard sometimes, and I feel like some kids or even adults forget how hard life can be. Mm. And so I wanted to show not only the more positive parts, of course, but and, the harder parts. And it's that voice that you've you just said that really does speak and resonate with, with people, not just other children, yeah. but grown-ups also. Yeah, I think... I feel like even grown-ups <laughs> can be quite naive if they've not gone through something. And so even when you, you are explaining things to them, you know, obviously they try to understand, but there's only so far that they can understand because mm. they've not gone through it. Yeah. And so I feel like having a visual representation like my, my life will be a lot easier for them to understand and for kids to understand as well. 
Well, we yeah. absolutely adore you. And we that, oh, thank th those you. scones are incredible. Are the amazing? rose in there is such a lovely touch. Yeah, delicate. I've never it's had really that before. I know, it just adds, adds an extra little yeah. twist to a it story. does. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Lily Meats is available on BBC iPlayer. I Will Survive is tonight at 5.30 on CBBC. And Born to Vlog is also available on uh, BBC One iPlayer. And we'll look forward to our interview. Yes. Thank you, yes. Very much. Thank, thank you very much.